Are we meant to fail in Lent? I think that the answer is yes. Let's get into this. Let's talk about it. Share with me your thoughts. I'm gonna give you a couple different ideas on things that you can do if your Lenten journey is a complete dumpster fire at this point. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Dina. My channel is A Catholic Wife. And in today's video, I wanna share with you some ideas on how to resurrect your Lenten journey if things have gone off the rails and give you some encouragement not to give up. So we are at the midway point in our Lenten journey. This Sunday will be our fourth week in Lent, which is also known as Latare Sunday. So you'll notice that Father is wearing rose color vestments. Stick with me. I'm gonna get some ideas on what you can do for this Sunday. I think that Lent is a perfect opportunity for us to realize just how weak we are and how desperately we need Christ at the center of everything we do whether it's our Lenten journey, whether it's our families, our jobs, whatever the case may be, we need to have Christ at the center. I don't know about you, but when I was planning out my Lenten journey this year, I had really lofty ideas. I think I might have had probably 10 or so different things that I was going to take on, give up, all the things from my personal life, things that I wanted my family to do, things that I wanted to do for this channel. There wasn't going to be a hiccup. I was going to finish strong. So week one of Lent, I was on fire. I was so excited. I knew all these things that I wanted to do. And I was convinced that this was the year that I was going to accomplish all of these things. I was going to give up online shopping. I attached a consequence if I did do online shopping, giving up alcohol, increasing the number of days we were going to fast for Lent, almsgiving, adoration, praying the Stations of the Cross, praying the Complete Rosary, on and on and on, putting up multiple videos a week. And I really and truly believed that this was the year I had everything locked down. I was going to finish strong at the end of Lent as I was at the beginning. Week two came, I was still doing fine. I had purchased one thing. I told my husband about it. He made the purchase for me. I made my donation to Mother Miriam, all was well. Week three, is where I started to see things starting to take a little bit of a turn for me. I still had all the things that I wanted to do. I wasn't approaching it in the same way as I was with week one, two, and by week three, I was starting to make excuses. The idea of, well, maybe on Sundays, I'll just have a glass of wine. Now, you can relax your Lenten practices on Sunday. I chose not to reintroduce alcohol at all. so. I wanted to make sure that that was something that I did not do even on Sundays. Last weekend, I, my weakness was really starting to creep in and I was starting to feel like I had failed. Like this was just like every other Lent I've ever experienced. I wasn't gonna be able to accomplish all my goals and I was not going to be able to stay the course. I think as we are at this midpoint in Lent, it is a good opportunity, even if Lent is going perfectly for you and you're not struggling, it might be a good time to take a pause and reevaluate what we're doing, where we need to make some changes, and if we are discouraged, to not give up. Look at your original plan and see, is there something in there that you can still hold on to? If you're having difficulty in maintaining your original ideas of what Lent was going to look like for you this year. What I cannot stress enough is get to confession. Must be followed by a sin. It has been one month since my last confession, and these are my sins. I missed Mass on Sunday twice. I lied about witnessing a murder once. I ate meat on Friday once. Wait a minute, can you back up a little bit and say that again? It's our obligation to get to confession every year, and so please get to confession before Easter comes. Another thing that you might consider doing is forgiving someone who has hurt you or you have hurt and commit to praying for that person for the remainder of Lent. And if you can carry that on past Lent, that's amazing. For prayer, I think that we have to be really specific. More than just saying, I'm gonna pray more, I'm going to pray in the morning. Really hone in on what it is that you wanna do, whether that's committing to every single morning, praying the morning offering, doing your nightly examination of conscience. Now these are things that we should definitely be doing, but if it isn't something that you have been doing, this is a great opportunity to try to cultivate that practice. So I would encourage you to 
figure out what prayer it is that you want to do. Maybe that's learning prayers in Latin. We still have some time left taking on the rosary. If it's not something that you've been doing on a regular basis, maybe consider praying the rosary for the remainder of Lent. Almsgiving. I'm sure that with your parish, just like mine, they are always in need of food for their food pantry. When you go to the grocery store, grab a couple extra things. I have such a great time doing that, buying extra food for someone else and praying for that family that's going to eat whatever it is that our family was able to give to them. So I would encourage you to do that if you have not been able to maybe make a big donation to your parish or to your diocese. Consider feeding the poor in your own parish. It is such a beautiful way for us to, to share the blessings that the Lord has given us is to help feed someone who is in a situation where they're not able to properly feed their own family. I think it is a beautiful way for us to thank the Lord for the ways that he has so abundantly blessed us by sharing our gifts with someone else. So if you have the ability to buy a couple extra things for a family in need, I think that that's a great addition to your Lenten journey. Another thing that you could possibly consider doing is give up secular media. For our family, we decided that it was just causing so much stress and aggravation, and it's back to back, negative story after negative story. And I don't think that we can really trust the media to give us an accurate depiction of what is happening in the world. So I would encourage you to find good, solid Catholic news sources, be that Church Militant, EWTN, The Remnant. I would look for Catholic sources to get any kind of information that you might be seeking about the world, the church, what is happening. Do not use secular media for your information is how we have decided to handle it for our family. Another thing that you might want to consider, and this one is a little bit difficult for me, if I'm not mindful, is avoiding negativity. It is so easy to fall into negative patterns of thought, speech around people that are negative, and it will impact your, your heart. It will definitely impact your life if negativity is the predominant emotion that you are dealing with. So I would try as hard as you can to root that out to not automatically go into negativity mode when there you see something, maybe you're delayed in traffic, someone is annoying, what have you, and to just try to really work on not being a negative person or being around negative people. One thing that I definitely want to do, and my intention at the beginning of Lent was a little bit different, so this is one of the tweaks that I'm making, is I want to give away 40 things in my household to the poor. And I would encourage you to do the same. Just want to take away the things and try to minimalize the stuff that I have. So giving away 40 things is definitely something that I'm going to do before the end of Lent. You know, I think a good thing to bear in mind is we can't fail. We can start out our Lenten journey with the best of intentions, be able to deny ourselves, to stay on course, to do all these things and kind of muscle our way through Lent. But I think that even if we stumble, in the things that we think that we want to do for Lent or we have good intentions to cultivate either a virtue or to give something up, to master our will. And if we stumble in those things, I don't think that we should consider those things as failures and really get down on ourselves and feel defeated and that we want to give up. I think that we can use that as an opportunity to grow closer to Christ, grow in humility, realizing just how small and weak we are and how desperately we need our Lord. So I think that if we look at it that way, that even as like our children, you know, if you're a parent and you see your child and they, they want to do good, they want to do something for you and it kind of just falls apart. We would never as parents look at them and just throw our hands up in disgust and you failed again and look at them in a way that was anything other than, I'm so proud of you for trying let me help you. I, I just want to scoop you up and hug you for trying so hard. And I think that that, at least in my mind, that's how our Lord is. I feel like he sees our efforts and sees what we're trying to do. And even when we make a mess of something, when we started out thinking that we were going to do so much good and all the things, I think he looks at us as our father and has such love and compassion for us and sees us in all our weak and broken places and I think he's proud of us. At least that's how I want to view the Lord. 
when I don't do things up to the standards that I set for myself. I wanted to talk to you about Latari Sunday. That is this coming Sunday, March the 14th. Latari is a Latin word. It means rejoice. You will notice that your priest will be wearing rose color vestments. We are at the halfway point of Lent. Latare Sunday is also called Mothering Sunday, and that's something that I did not know. The ancient tradition was that at this halfway point, the church eases up a little bit on our Lenten practices on Latare Sunday. A few ideas for Mothering Sunday that you can do to visit the parish where you were baptized. Now, for me, I was baptized in New York. My husband was baptized in Florida, as were all of our children, and we happen to live in Tennessee now. So that isn't an option for us, but one thing that you can do is you can visit the cathedral parish in your diocese. I would also encourage you to buy roses for Our Lady. Now, you can bring those to your parish to place before a statue of Our Lady at your parish or at your diocese if you happen to visit. We happen to have statues of Our Lady all over our house, in our front yard, in the backyard, inside our home. And so I will place roses in front of one of the statues that we have for Our Lady. So these are all things that have been done, the ancient customs that have been done for Latare Sunday, Mothering Sunday, that you might want to incorporate into your family's tradition. I would also encourage you to make a special dinner for this coming Sunday as we are trying to get through this Lenten journey, have a little bit of happiness. Now again, on Sundays we can ease our Lenten sacrifices up as they are little Easter's that we are celebrating, but maybe even a little bit more. So maybe a special dessert, flowers on the table for dinner, just make it even more special for your family and encourage them. We are almost there, we are getting to Easter Sunday, and we should be joyful on this Latari Sunday that is coming up. I think that when we get to those moments in our journey where we just feel defeated, that we didn't get to do the things that we wanted to do and we're struggling so hard, I would encourage you to meditate on our Lord's passion and just think about our Lord when he was on his way to Golgotha and he fell. And he was when he was carrying his cross and he fell and Simon was brought in to help our Lord get up to help our Lord carry his cross. And I think that that was so beautiful that for me, when I think about that, it wasn't that the Lord necessarily needed Simon. He doesn't need us to do anything, but he allowed Simon to participate in that moment in the Lord's life. And I think that it's so beautiful that even our blessed Lord needed help in that moment in time. And we can be that Simon for someone else. So whether it's your husband or your wife or your children or somebody, a friend, family that is struggling, encourage them. Don't give up. Get back up. You can do this and we can finish strong. We are not alone in this journey. Christ walks with us on our journey to Easter. He walks with us on our journey to heaven, God willing. We're all supposed to be helping each other along our way and our journey. And we're going to fall and we're going to make mistakes and we're going to hurt each other and we're going to be hurt. But I think when our eyes are on Christ and we're moving towards him and we remember that everybody is in a different spot on this journey, I think that it gives us a lot of hope for what's to come. Easter can be even more incredible if we don't give in. Let's have grace with ourselves and with each other, remembering who is in control and truly thinking about what this Lenten journey is for. Thank you so much for watching my videos for sharing and commenting. I truly do appreciate you. I pray for you all and I ask that for your prayers for me. I will see you in my next video. Take care. God bless.